artist from Berlin, um, Jonathan Blackwood, artist from Aberdeen, Scotland, and Sabrina Shabich And um, since um, the project was intentionally oriented as a proactive uh, artistic object with uh, intention to be a permanent artistic intervention in a public space, uh, engaged and inspired with uh, certain questions related to the River Una, but not only to the River Una, but uh, to all other rivers, endangered waters, endangered species, uh, the, also initiates the question of the public space, uh, because as a permanent sculpture in a public space initiates um, itself a whole and very complex uh, eventual discussion about eventually whom the public space belongs. Uh, and we as an NGO, as a non-profit organization here in Krak, uh, we understand us as uh, someone who is, should be in charge, like let's say in a vehicle, a motor for in initiating and opening such questions, um, opening uh, the discussions, uh, establishing platforms, and I'm so glad that uh, tonight I see uh, here um, nice faces and different peoples with uh, various professional backgrounds. I see uh, urbanists, I see uh, architects, I see environmentalists, I see activists, I see uh, normal but very uh, um, uh, responsible citizens of Bihać who um, uh, I would dare to say pay attention to the respected nature and uh, who I truly hope can support us in uh, better understanding of that particular sculpture of Alban Muya. And for, I mean, I could extend this introduction and include maybe one additional paragraph that in Bosnia and Herzegovina, um, the question of environment and the question of ecology is not systematically part of the institutional uh, approach and regulations as it is most probably in European community or other countries as well. So uh, I could even claim that Bosnian Herzegovinian institutions and state as such uh, generally failed in protecting um, not only rivers, now I'm speaking more generally about failure of the state in general, Absolutely. of the system, of course, and we as a citizens, uh, we are having the opportunity to participate, to involve, to shape, to design, uh, whatever, the commons, let's say the commons. Um, and therefore, the motivation for that project in general, maybe also to add in this particular moment that uh, this is all happening within the project Creative Ecologies. Uh, that we here in Krak designed. Uh, actually, we are intending to, so we gathered five different artists. Alban Muya is one of them. Uh, and
to collaborate with them, to not to pursue, persuade them, but to involve them, to get them on board, to explain, to uh, exchange, to somehow create collaborative understanding about all, the, all those things. And this particular moment was for me personally very uh, inspiring and very enriching because they, uh, they, they, they supported us and uh, they actually are part, very responsible, very demand, very uh, responsible part of that project. Um, so thank you one more time for coming. Thank you for uh, taking your time and traveling to Bihać in such a, uh, let's say, bad weather, although it's nice weather, it's November weather, so we enjoy no Bihać November weather. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being part of this discussion. And um, I would like also to invite all of you, so after the session, we will have, um, we will also use this opportunity to promote this project to celebrate it a little bit and we will have we will invite you for drinks and uh, finger food and we will also have uh, opportunity opportunity to dance a little bit here on and on this floor so um and of course before bef before all of that we will have uh, eventual opportunity to, to to talk so i would like i would like to start the conversation and i would like to before i start to introduce my uh, guest tonight so alban muya is kosovan um, contemporary artist based in Berlin and Pristina, uh, influenced primarily by social, political, and economic transformation process in the wider surrounding region, he investigates history and social political themes and links them to his position in Kosovo today. Uh, Muya represented Pavilion of Republic of Kosovo at the 58th Venice Biennale exhibition in 2019 with a project called Family Album. On my right side, uh, I'm very honored to have as a guest uh, Dr. Jonathan Blackwood. He is an art historian and he teaches um, at the Grace School of Art at the Robert Gordon University in Aberdeen in Scotland. Um, Blackwood's research interests lie in contemporary art and activism, art and politics, and contemporary art and post-socialists transformation in the former Yugoslavia and the former Soviet Union. In the United Kingdom context of United Kingdom, he's also interested in contemporary Scottish art and contemporary art and peripherality. And uh, on my left side, uh, Sabina Šabić. Um, I'm very glad that uh, you as an activist could join our conversation. She is a cultural manager and producer in the field of human rights and ecology. She is founder of the non-governmental organization Artistic Laboratory Art Lab. She considers her work as a vehicle of societal and cultural transformations in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Her most recent project covered the issues of human rights of the refugees in Bosnia, vulnerable groups in the society, as well as protection of rivers, forests, and other natural habitats of human and other species. Thank you for being here. Uh, I would just start with Alban Muya and give him the honor to explain us uh, a little bit more about the project, Svi, uh, art, art project Svi Žele Pogled. I'm so uh, interested to hear your perspective. Please. Um, dobro večer. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Irfan and, uh, and Kraken for inviting me and giving me this opportunity. You can put the floor. Uh, but I would like to thank you all for being here. I am thankful when people come to exhibitions, or opening of our exhibitions, but when they come to talks, I am double thankful. So I really appreciate that. Um, it's second time here in Bihać, both for same uh, project. I was here last year. It was same days with raining. I guess I bring Berechet. 
So whenever I come here, it's rainy days. Um, so basically, I know Bihar only rains, but uh, still, it's very uh, gave me a lot of uh, uh, positive vibes, starting from this uh, building. Yeah, last year I came here. Uh, actually, we started this communication uh, more than a year and a half ago, and we know each other with like more than ten years. So finally, we had this opportunity to communicate for collaboration. And when um, uh, Irfan and Krak invited me, uh, I didn't know exactly where is Biaj. I know by name, but uh, I, I haven't been before. And uh, music. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Can you hear it also? Uh, I love it, so that's why it's, but it's okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so yeah, uh, basically, basically, um, when I came here for the first time, uh, of course, I know for the history of uh, the city, I uh, get to read a bit. I know from for the history of Bosnia. So basically, uh, I was informed, but not particularly with, uh, let's say, environment or what was going on here or what is going on now because usually what is going on here is kind of a consequences now and um, I was uh, very happy to meet a few NGO leaders or stakeholders which uh, last year Irfan organized that I will meet and I will do my research because I did three days research here and uh, they were very helpful, actually, and uh, all of them are very interesting. And uh, I was l lucky and happy to get these uh, links and to read and check later. And um, so, of course, we're walking around. And uh, uh, since I come from Pristina, and even though I live uh, now in, in Berlin, I know more or less uh, uh, the, let's say, a landscape of uh, post-war uh, cities. And I know this uh, uh, possibility of uh, living in DIY, do it for yourself. And I know uh, very often that uh, our common space or our common public space is not necessarily ours. And this things, this links kind of helped me to come to the idea that actually, I got it here from uh, from uh, Krak, from one of this presentation. And uh, Adnan is here maybe, yeah, designer. Uh, he had uh, one of the presentation which actually helped me. He was talking about how some of the public green places around uh, Una were kind of, uh, let's say, uh, occupied it or like kind of squat by a strong people, which I know as a story as well from Kosovo. So, Svijel uh, Pogled or everybody wants a view actually came like naturally because I believe everybody wants a view. And the uh, idea or uh, proposal was nothing to give, let's say, answer because we as an artist, we don't try to give answer, we try to question. And question the, uh, let's say, um, the system or local or uh, uh, original or even the main government for their action that we can do. And from that, after to bring to discussion what we are doing now. So uh, we walked around uh, UNA, and uh, after the uh, meetings with NGOs, actually I knew first day what I'm gonna do. Of course, I never told you, because I said maybe it uh, uh, has to be more, let's say, but sometimes it comes, it sometimes doesn't come. But, um, and uh, for me, it was very important to install something that it kind of belongs to the environment, belongs to, Mahala to neighborhood, but as well question things. And uh, and the building next to us, uh, I think it was very uh, um, easy decision, even though we had a plan B as well, because it looks from a distance and it looks like it's one of the signs that was there. And uh, I hope it's gonna be there. And with that idea was to question uh, that we need to get together, we need to work together, and if but if something is common, it's uh, something it's ours. It's for something we pay taxes, 
I think it should belong to us. And uh, this occupation of public space uh, or uh, all this uh, political, economical, social transformation were always my interest. And uh, uh, I mean, uh, we didn't know how it's going to function, how are we going to execute, how are we going to do it, or what kind of letters we're going to do. But uh, more or less, I knew from the first days I was here that uh, uh, how it's going to look more or less in my in my mind. And uh, what we really believe and what I really hope is that uh, uh, at least this will bring discussion to our neighbors, to the people who live in the, in the building, and why not to help them to use kind of a landmark. Excellent. You, you just uh, finished your answer with, uh, with such a great um, connection to next question, which I want to ask uh, um, John. Um, uh, there is, at least me as a teacher at a university who teaches art, uh, I always have this dilemma, and uh, it's probably inspired by my profession to observe and make distinct between art and design through one simple question of functionality. If uh, design is having a function, it's obviously design, or let's assume it is, and uh, art doesn't have to have the function. What is your opinion in that particular case uh, about the function of art, in particular case of Albans Muya Svijele Ponglen, and its intention to uh, initiate, to change, to reshape, to move, to actually work something, to do something? Thank you very much, uh, Irfan. Good evening, everyone. And Thanks for coming to the discussion and for the invitation. Uh, for me, this is a really interesting piece because we were discussing it amongst ourselves yesterday. And the way that it is situated and the font that is used in the piece, it could be if you're in a hurry, you look up and you think, oh, that's an old Yugoslav sign, Energo Invest or something like that, that are frequently in the top of buildings. But what Alban asks us to do with this piece is to actively look. Because if you actively look, you realize it isn't Energo Invest or Bosnaliak or whatever. Um, it's a message that everyone wants a view. So first of all, what is that view? And of course, it's related to the particular context uh, that you've intervened in here in Bihać. But of course, everybody's view that they want is different. So what is a view and what is the spectator's gaze? And it opens out questions for me of the atomization of society, of our relations with one another, the financialization of every single aspect of our lives, including nature, including our response to that. And leading on from that atomization on a personal level, I think also it leads on to a thought about the atomization of our view of nature as a public good. Because clearly, whilst most people in this room are working hard to intervene in nature, or at least to think carefully about it, there are those who simply see it as a means of making money and therefore how do you engage those people and find a compromise or a meeting of minds? Um, and that is the job of activism, I suppose. And the troubled crossover between contemporary art and activism. Contemporary artists and activists are not always easy bedfellows, as we would say in English. There's significant mutual irritations between artists and activists, as well as areas in which contemporary artists and those whose activity lies in political activism can cooperate. But there's plenty of mutual frustrations as well. And working out, working through those frustrations, and then working in common to confront those who see nature simply as a means of making money or claiming space for a personal life is really quite consequential, I think. Thank you. Excellent. Um, Sabina, uh, you 
have been doing a lot of projects involving um, activists in a, in a scene of, of uh, initiating uh, civic re reactions or actions of fighting, let's say, fighting against wrong moves uh, of uh, citizens, of corporations, of in investors, of uh, different uh, centers of power. How would you, as someone in a field, someone uh, close to, let's say, regular people who are endangered or not protected systematically, how would you describe um, the intention of art and culture uh, toward, a, as a vehicle, as a tool of, of, of activist uh, fight? Uh, in what extent can culture and art change something? Can it at all? And there is a question. It can. <laughs> uh, first of all, I would like just to raise this glass of water so you can see it. And then I want to thank all of you because no artist being present without audience has sense, right? So thank you for being here with us as art lovers, but also as a free citizens. Um, I, I thank you, <laughs> Alvin. <laughs> Um, for choosing to speak deep with your art, to alarm, to make people look on the other side. Thank you, John, for being always there and helping us on this side of Balkan. And thank you, Irfan, and all the Krag members, team members, you have been now my official hope that, uh, that we can continue and we should do it much harder. <laughs> so um, I chose long time ago that um, art, living in the Balkans, I choose that art should not be only there for aesthetics. Because after the war, we started a new kind of era of rehabilitation of society. And um, I was always, always doing art that speaks not just aesthetics, but it has deeper background. Um, in the last 25 years, I was on the first front on different stories of activism. But let's keep it simple. simple. Human rights, water is the first human right, uh, is a freedom. Uh, so um, I was with migrants, refugees, now, at this uh, recent years, I'm uh, on, on the, with people who are defending rivers from the investors. Uh, social change is possible, and this is the era, especially in the Balkans, and I'm going to concentrate my talk on Bosnia and Herzegovina, because most of the days I spent here in my beautiful country. So what I experience doing art and living with artists is change. And I, I, I have many examples uh, worldwide, but also here in Balkans. But I'm going to just make a few for you. Um, like 10 years ago, I started the, the uh, project in um, orphanage in Sarajevo. And we, we started to make a song. And it was the, the, the time of really intensive Palestine theme and issues. So when you open, I don't watch TV, but laptop, social media, it was blood, it was everywhere. You couldn't escape it, actually. 
And at the time I was doing this music therapy project in an orphanage. And I wanted, my goal was just to learn kids, you know, that they are not the only one with the burden, you know, that I'm there for them and that they can help others. And we just wanted to make a song with no aims of, we didn't think about the success. It was therape therapeutic work. We made a song to make a long story short. <laughs> and can, can, uh, can our uh, activist practice be measured? Are there significant and visible movements in uh, activism? For example, your collaboration with uh, musicians recently and engaging them, protecting the rivers. Can those actions be measures, measured? Uh, well, I'm working only with the uh, artists who, 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 who see that far. And I choose that because it, it, it's there, you know. And uh, we can measure it because uh, just one example, Bosnia and Herzegovina, unfortunately, isn't, uh, doesn't have anymore any kind of protest culture. We have so many problems, right? So many absurds that we get up daily, you know. But we don't protest, right? If uh, some protests uh, occur, it's really mailed and, and it disappeared. But when you put artists on a protest, you know, not just as a public figure, but as a, an artist with artwork or something he does in a song or something like Alan did with this in installation, it, it's completely it's different. something different. And the next protest, if you are an organizer, and people are knowing that it will be some music, it will be some, someone who is powerful, because artist is powerful. Let's hope Alban Muya's work is powerful and will it be is. able, yes. It is, really. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Alban, um, I was I saw your works in Tirana and Pristina mo very recently, which are also uh, publicly installed in a, in a public space. The, uh, Tira I don't know, enough is enough tir in Tirana and uh, above. What is the name? Above everything. Above everyone. Above everyone. And uh, as so far as a, as an observer, as uh, as as someone who was uh, gazing in those pieces, I was uh, always uh, intrigued by the question: uh, What does it mean for an artist? to work in a public space in general. I mean, uh, traditionally, or let's say co conventionally, ar artists and curators, they work in the galleries. But what it means, what does it mean to, go, to exit that space, to go out of that space, go out of in, in a city for you? Uh, basically, till uh, late, I was thinking as well that artists should work in studios or studio. And uh, most of my practice or my works or my project are done in the studio. And of course, they would end up in exhibitions or uh, more or less similar uh, um, presentations. Uh, lately, I mean, um, since a while, I mean, since a few years, but especially since COVID came, I thought that uh, it's more important that if you bring a work to audience, not the audience to the exhibition space. For a moment, we all experienced that we couldn't really visit our parents. Not uh, let's forget about other art institutions or um, exhibition space or white cube or museums. So, 2020, I, uh, I was invited to do a piece from uh, municipality of Tirana in a p uh, and Harabel uh, contemporary art space initiated to do in in uh, in, uh, in 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 Tirana in a uh, uh, center and the reaction or uh, intervention it became even more stronger when we had to reveal during the pandemic because uh, as i said uh, we don't need to bring, let's say, people to the gallery. We don't need to expect any elite to visit our pieces or our piece. 
and uh, but it can bring something to them and they can communicate they can criticize they can discuss they can open things that probably they haven't done it before uh, enough is enough it's a piece in public space which is intend to be as well permanent uh, public space it's my first and uh, in this kind of uh, work which uh, is going to end up now this triangle with another piece i'm doing in pristina and basically but as a idea, as a concept uh, uh, similar to Swiss Jail Apocalypse, it's more above everyone, which I did now for uh, Manifesta Biennale, just closed two weeks ago. Peace is still there. We build, uh, I'm going to go back to Enough is Enough, but just kind of to make a connection with, uh, with the conceptually with the piece here. Above everyone actually uh, discuss or bring to discussion the idea of building illegal houses above buildings in the time when there was a lack of law after the war in Kosovo. What happened, uh, basically, it talks about uh, DIY as well, how people they orient of the um, uh, everyday life in their own city, and how people uh, bring uh, something what was born, if I can call it naturally, because people they lost their own property, and they found a way in this time there was lack of law to find a spot where they can build their own habitat. So a lot of houses around uh, Pristina, all over Kosovo, but especially around Pristina because I did the research in Pristina, uh, they build houses above buildings. When I say buildings, like a socialist or a block uh, like here, it's just like somebody privately went there and built another floor. And I did a couple of uh, paintings first, like uh, exist of 13 paintings of all over uh, most, let's say, iconic, if I can call it iconic, because you, everywhere you have illegal uh, houses, or I'm not saying everywhere, but a lot of places with transitions that we, as uh, ex-Yugoslavian countries were, but as well Latin countries, and you, you see illegal annexes. But illegal annexes, above the buildings, it was kind of, a, for me, a challenge, I believe, and uh, uh, I knew something as well. So after I moved to Berlin, I saw this illegal annexes or illegal buildings uh, more obviously than I saw it before. Because when I used to live there, they are kind of part of urban planning. Mm -hmm. And of course, the idea was not to criticize. Our idea was as well to bring to discussion a phenomenon that exists there. And uh, if they find a way how to, let's say, uh, legalize, if they respect any possible law, why not? But if not, maybe they can find a way how they can uh, give them a, a roof uh, and they, 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 they find a way how to integrate in the, in the plan. But at least I said that if one day at least there are going to be some architecture school that bring there and say to students, this is not the way how we're going to grow up our kids in the future. And the piece, even though it looks completely different architecturally, I mean, with the piece, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's actually it's a two floors house built above uh, ex Germia department store. We found it as well very legendary uh, building, the most known, maybe probably the most known building in, in Pristina from a Yugoslavian modern architecture time. And uh, Linea Barashevsky uh, plan. So it was a lot of discussion between 20 years, is this space gonna be a museum? Is this space is gonna be a, a, a concert hall? Somehow art people lost because I think it's gonna be a concert hall, but we kind of brought to discussion again that we might save it. But as a building, somehow I think it's saved. And as a house building above this building, idea was to maybe to be the last illegal above uh, the houses above the building. And that was our, our question, what we want to do that. Uh, I, as I said, started with a painting, finished with a big installation. It's like a two floors house. And, uh, but uh, to compare with, uh, with, uh, with uh, Enough is Enough, which let's say, Technically, it's similar with uh, uh, with uh, with uh, um, Svijel Poglet, just a bit bigger. Uh, we kind of connected a uh, uh, river Lana uh, uh, as a bridge with with letters. Actually, I dedicated that piece to refugees, and because uh, as we and uh, you guys know, because we had quite similar past, uh, uh, a lot of us went as a refugee to Albania, a half million. 
and then another half million went to other neighbors. During the war. During the war, yeah. So, so basically 90% 90, 90 were displaced from the house, 50% uh, outside of Kosovo, so we're all, for one, two days, all refugees. Uh, and uh, in Tirana, there's, for the first time, uh, somebody was very important, I don't want to mention names, came there and said, okay, enough is enough, Kosovo should get the freedom. And that was a moment when I think I want to refer this piece to refugees, but to bring to discussion what was going on to refugees today. Because when we started the idea for the peace in Tirana was all this, what we experience now, refugees coming around here, a lot of refugees okay. from, from, from different zone of crisis. Uh, and of course, the idea was to question, do really people become a refugee by choice? Okay. Not really. Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, I didn't know that part of the story that uh, this parole, enough is enough, is related to the recent history. I connected it with someone else. I didn't know that part uh, of the story. Uh, actually, Thanks. we didn't uh, want to, let's say, uh, give a statement. Idea was to leave people to find themselves in the peace. Oh, because, yes. Because, uh, of course, every uh, everybody can uh, kind of fed up with something that they need to do to, to, to fight. And especially fighting for freedom is the most fundamental thing they can oh, do. Of course, yes. OK, yes. Um, <clears throat> John, I have uh, a question for you, which is actually about the practice that Krak is doing with, uh, with, with, with intention to, let's say, occupy the public space with uh, art. And uh, it's, there is always a question about um, ethical question of uh, who is actually proposing what and uh, how certain design and proposal should be installed and put in a public space. This is a big question for us because when we uh, when we developing the idea with artists and now we are doing that with some other artists within the project Creative Colleges, this is, there is a question um, because not everyone loves, not every citizen uh, can understand or loves or appreciate that approach. What, how, how would you say uh, how, how uh, democracy can work in that direction, how to balance between different sides, between uh, uh, initiators, between citizens, between governmental institutions who at the end are giving permissions? It's a very broad question, but to answer it as succinctly as I can, I, I think it is down to simple consultation, not only with the users of the centre, but also with those who live in the area and who may be subject to some of the things um, that you do. So I think a place like this and other similar places to it can only grow with deep roots in the community. Because after all, the funder or a politician can change and the new one can have different priorities and all of a sudden you have a problem with funding. And it's that route in the community that will pull you through those difficult times that may or may not come. But there's a broader point here, I think, beyond crack. And I think places like crack, like Kulturni uh, Centre, Textile and Steep that we've been talking about since I've been here in Macedonia that was established in 2016. There are similar places all over Europe where people don't ask permission but they seek to earn the interest of people. They earn the right to discuss uh, whatever is in their programme. And I think that comes out of consultation with the people and even sometimes putting on exhibitions or events that the management of the centre personally may not be very interested in. But still, if you put that exhibition on and you've met your audience who's interested in that halfway, then they will come to something that maybe privately they're not terribly interested in. So you establish a middle ground where the centre becomes a means whereby people can expand their worldview, grow the skill set that they have, learn how to do things. And this grassroots self-started methodology is going to be vital. 
because in my country, the welfare state, as it was called, is retreating quickly after Brexit and with successive governments of ever more right-wing flavour. Um, so the funding available for culture is decreasing and therefore this strategy is going to become necessary and that's why one of the most interesting writers on contemporary art in the UK context, uh, Morgan Quaintance, has said that institutions are going to wither in the next 10 to 20 years and the most interesting things will actually happen beyond the publicly funded institutions that there are at present, you know. So I think it's a very broad and complex answer to that one. Okay, great. And I would continue uh, another question asking you, so since you live, how long you lived in Sarajevo? Uh, you lived four, five? Three, no, three and a half years. Three and a half yeah. years. So while you have been living in Sarajevo, um, engaged very deeply and consequently in a local uh, Sarajevan artistic scene, um, is there anything similar in Sarajevo um, by artists or activists or different practitioners um, uh, in the field of culture who have been um, uh, using the strategies of occupation of occupy of the no. public space Do, can you can you is yeah. there any comparison can you uh, mention several or is there any at all well sure i mean going back 15 years you have Cherlama in the old Skinderia shopping center and actually many other short run galleries for that time that had a much shorter life than Cherlama you had Berake in 2006 which the site of Barake is built over now by banks, but that was also an initiative that lasted 18 months, two years. Longer lasting is Surfana, the feminist collective based in Sarajevo, but with links across the Western Balkans and indeed Central Europe that has done many such projects in former military sites or public spaces uh, in Sarajevo. I'm thinking of the Bring In, Take Out Living Archive, for example. Um, and beyond that, of course, we have um, Ars Cosera, the land art project uh, run by Tachka, and the work of Sasha Karolic and his work Kvadrat, which is about 50 miles northeast of here on the Croatian border, where an old site where Tito had been painted in white letters by pioneers in the 80s was replaced with a square, you know, and cleared land using the old stones from the letters that once spelled Tito and making it into a square. So there's lots of these sorts of projects which seek to engage local communities, ask for their opinion uh, in developing a programme and then realise it with their help and there's a real strength in those sorts of programmes. Cool. Thanks, Sabina. Let me ask you about um, um, uh, the, the projects that you are right now working on related on a protection of rivers. Can you tell us? Well, actually, um, I've been um, invited by the international organization from Vienna called River Watch to uh, start the campaign with artists with the aim to help to save the rivers together with the citizens, right, and uh, activists. And uh, I cannot explain how much I was thrilled that finally someone <laughs> So art and artists as a useful tool to help uh, local people and stuff. But unfortunately, when we started the campaign, a pandemic came. So everything we planned actually on the rivers to help those local people was like every, everything else was topped. And we ended up online we couldn't do a much of performance art because there's no audience in a sense live. And uh, especially in a sense of the rivers during pandemic, we faced uh, uh, really 
disasterful <laughs> fact that investors helped by corruption and governmental people, while we were told that we should be inside lockdown, the buggers on the rivers were working even in three shifts because we couldn't come and protest to save the river because by the law they would tell us, oh, you break the law, you should stay inside. But all the investors, workers, doubled their shifts so they can kill the river as fast as they could. So it was really frustrating, but for me, as someone who was in charge, and I'm very responsible when the artists are involved, uh, how they are treated, how their work is placed, you know, everything connected to them. So for me, it was very frustrating that I was online and trying to do something, you know. I am, I'm brave enough and I will risk jail, and, but I cannot expect artists or anybody else to do it. So in that se sense, it was really kind of tricky. And finally, now, we are uh, ending this uh, official campaign, and we, I'm going to continue together with the artists to do even broader um, idea, which will not just saving, unfortunately, we have to save water, rivers, but also woods. And we have this uh, toxic air every day inhaling. So I have few ideas how we can continue this because this campaign about the rivers did show with the many beautiful human beings, but then artists also, like uh, Darko Rundek, many local artists, different profiles, like Dubioza Collective, uh, like many photographers, beautiful people, many performance artists, you know. I think that artists now, uh, um, are crucial too because we as a citizens we, we we don't have this trust towards politicians even if there is some new decent politician you have this right doubt that how honest he is it takes time for him to show but what what artist is it's someone who says no before the citizens ever did. I don't want to change my color of this background because you said so. They, they always demanding freedom, independence, their own authentic yeah, space. So art is, is something that we need urgently okay. and, and very intensively okay. more. Yeah. Uh, when when you start talking about COVID and how I was thinking you will mention how the rivers or at least I remember the story how uh, water in Venice has been cleaning during at the beginning of COVID and uh, people start doing uh, pictures and at finally seeing uh, fishes in in underneath in whenever you go as a tourist to Venice you never see anything it's just muddy dirty water and then we all realize how capitalism is ruining and destroying the environment. Uh, but uh, we don't have so much time to go <laughs> in all details, so I uh, will uh, set final questions. And I would like to hear, before I ask audience to uh, ask any questions, uh, what do you think, Alban, uh, it's about your piece of art, Svijele Pogled? What do you think it's desirable future of it? Uh, I don't know if I can really think something, but I can really hope something. I really hope that, uh, as I said in the beginning, it's gonna bring discussion to this kind of discussion and beyond that, to the people that we really need to take care of our planet or our land because we don't have something B, we have only this E. And uh, of course, we are not against or we are of rich, uh, oligarchs or businessmen, I mean, they can develop their own creation ideas, maybe they can contribute in art as well, 
but uh, not in the in the back of us. I mean, it's uh, if it's a plan that it's belong to us, it should, should be. I mean, even if it's something developed, has to be like we did with the families with the, uh, of the building, so we can gather together and discuss and why we it's good for community. And uh, actually, what I think and what what, what I hope it's uh, as well to be as a as a, a reference for something. I mean. Uh, uh, if it's a peak piece in public space, you always believe, or all, at least hope, that it's gonna it, it's gonna get a reference for something. And uh, for this piece, of course, it's a reference for the what we discussed till now, the environment, or uh, saving the the the, you know, the or what we actually call very well, it's a uh, uh, creative ecologies. It's uh, and uh, well, that's uh, what I can hope, and I uh, really hope uh, we kind of contributed something together for uh, this topic, which is very, 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 very important uh, and fundamental for us as a society, but especially for newborn child or like uh, kids right now. Good, thanks. And <coughs> sorry, before I open up uh, um, podium for any discussion, um, and uh, I think that uh, it's kind of organically um, good point to ask the question, we are facing the crises uh, on every day, every moment, like around us. There is a health crisis, there is a security uh, crisis, there are environmental crises going on. <clears throat> Many things are just uh, shaped by urgent questions around us. What do you think as an art historian and curator, wh how, what can curating, what can art do in that sense, in that direction? <clears throat> I'm not sure curating can do very much, honestly. Um, but that's because I'm a Scottish Presbyterian and tend towards gloom. But um, I think curating can just keep asking questions, not allowing uh, the attention of the audience to drift away, um, but to keep these questions front and centre. And it's a difficult balance for a curator to strike. The example I can use is after, from history, is after the First World War, where in the British context, painting was pretty boring for 10 years. It was pleasant, francophile, pretty, had no big ideas behind it. But the reason for that was that people were fundamentally traumatized by four years of mechanized conflict and then a pandemic on top of that. So they didn't want to be lectured when they went to a gallery. They wanted to go and enjoy. And art still has to leave a space for spectacle for people to enjoy. But if you can find a balance between that spectacle, as we see here, and also between a message which keeps these urgencies in people's minds and perhaps causes them to stop and think again, about their position in relation to those urgencies. I think that's the basis of a successful curation or exhibition. I don't think you can ask anything more really at, at, at this time. Thanks. <clears throat> Great, thank you so much. Uh, I will stop here right now and uh, I was looking at the watch for a whole time and I think it's good time to open up uh, discussion and questions from our audience. Maybe there is someone who would like to ask something or comment. Please. Uh, hello to everybody. <coughs> I, I will, I'm Armin Amidic, uh, head of the touristic community of city of Bihać. I would to address to Krak because uh, I mean, you, you brought all these artists and sent the message, and uh, this is something we need at this time because when we talk about activism in the ecological way in our city, we always talk about the Unski Smaragdi and uh, Boško Marjanovic, who, who done something that is worth of remembering even 20 years later or 30 years later. But as this man died, we still talk about them, but we have nothing new in the city provoking people and telling us something. And with these art installations, I mean, this will stay, even if we died or make something, uh, some other job. So th this is something that is always here 
to provoke us, to ask questions, and not to be uh, just, will, will somebody do something? And there is no Bosch club, we're all like sitting comfortably and telling the problems between ourselves, but there is not enough like public word addressing all, the, all these problems. And in these 20 years missing Bosco, if we had 20 years of this artistics, uh, uh, artistics impact in the community, I mean, maybe somebody else would always walk and, and provoking them, what, what is this happening? So this is something we need and this is something I motivate you to continue on doing because the problem we are having now is not something like, when there was hydro dams in the rivers, it was like easier than today because there was, there was some investor who want to build dams on our rivers. There was some politic party who is approving this and it's easy, you know the enemies, it's the, you know who are the bad guys, but today the problem in our city and our river is that every man who, because of less of the law and less of ways, uh, telling to people how to build something on the on the river or that is authentic, that will that will impress people coming as a tourist now, and now everybody is in the system. Everybody that we are now fighting uh, against, me, I mean, people from from me having something on the river and anybody else uh, is the enemy now. It's not some bad politician and bad investors, investor. We're all the enemy is now because there is no law and there, there is like tough to say, okay, what is the problem, what we have to do? So maybe this art that Alban is saying is just to set question and uh, then people should do all the rest. I, I think uh, with a lot of that is giving me as a somebody who loves landscapes and everything else uh, hope that th this will come younger people and that will be some impact on the politic political, it will be a political speech after this. I mean a, a, a motto that will go with it, the people that we will know what to do because now we are all like uh, behaving like just be silent, okay, somebody else will do it. I mean, even you as an artist want to uh, find somebody who will do it, but that's even a, that even can be a spark for something else. Thanks. Thank you. But this is not a question. This is a, this is a comment, very great comment. Nice, no, excellent. No, uh, this is great observation that uh, uh, art can be even a reminder for a future generation and part of the heritage of something, of, of, of the space and the time of the certain moment in, in the history. Good, excellent. Uh, sorry, uh, because I'm very glad for your question and presence. Um, we cannot stop something to happen for good if we don't change the laws, right? So artists should be our sorry, allies to point so people could easily or less hard to change the laws. This is the law that we uh, forbidden finally, the mini dams in, in Federation, unfortunately, RS is not, is not there. But it was with, with the help of the artists, public figures, powerful. I, I see artists more powerf powerful than politicians. Sorry, it's my point of view. But if we make make uh, make changes in a law, then we protected something for the next generations. And artists are playing a great, great important role to okay. help us doing that. Excellent. Yeah. Good. I saw also some other people raising their hands. Did I? No. Okay, there is, yes, that lady in the glasses. Thank you. I'm Siana Hosic, working as urban planner at municipality of Bihać. Uh, first, uh, I will give a one, at least one, good example. I mean, now uh, we are talking how artists are acting in the field of saving the nature. Of course, Alban cannot go and to remove a building and do some kind of action. This is his way, or let's say the way how artists 
is reacting to this kind of problem. So we should ask ourselves as a citizens, as a urban planners, maybe as I, as an architect, as anybody in, the, in their own field, how to react on this kind of problems that we are dealing with. So at least to somehow to wake our consciences over these problems. But uh, the social medias are, are really important now at this field. We had a really great example of that. I'm not sure whether I can remember. It was maybe a year ago. Maybe Armin will remember that exactly. We had a, here a local investor, a businessman, well known, who did some uh, building construction, the walls on the coast of Una. And at that time, uh, somehow, uh, people really here, especially social medias, uh, they somehow woke up and uh, did a really great job uh, that happened that that uh, businessman, let's say his conscience is somehow woke because maybe of the consequences that he was thinking that could be happened. And then uh, two or three days after that, he removed this concrete from the coast of the river. Of course, those are a really small examples toward the ones that are illegally built. And I know from my work, uh, somehow we are every, every time as urban plan planners trying to do everything uh, with, the, with the plans, uh, with urbanistic and uh, spatial plans to uh, protect river. To we, of course, it is not permitted to at somehow work uh, to build on the shores of on the coast of the river, but we cannot stop illegally uh, illegal buildings because uh, we would need, I think, at least 25 surveyors to work on a field to 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 stop uh, buildings. At the end, uh, what is the second problem are really long legal procedures of removing the buildings. Mostly they finish on a court, which lasts for years, and at the end we have the buildings that lasts forever, never removed. So that's kind of a problem that we are mostly dealing with. Uh, sec this is, <laughs> you, you know, some kind of observations. And the second one, I would like to ask Alman Muya. Uh, I was wondering, because I was involved in choosing the location of this building, uh, last year, we were passing through the city, trying to find the locations. There were some locations in the center of the city. And I am wondering, because I don't know the reason at the end, how and why he chose this building. So I would like him <laughs> to, I know that this is not because of crack, maybe because of something else. I would like him to tell us why he chose precisely this building. And thank you very much. Um. Thank you for uh, question. Actually, yeah, last year here, we're like for two days, we're looking for location, and uh, the location that you mentioned in the center was like a Plan B, but always here this building, really when I saw from the first day, was a Plan E. Somehow, I think environment, which a lot of people they might see that it's something is it's kind of a ruin uh, area, but I really like that environment. All these industrial areas, or I'm um, actually doesn't it actually function anymore, but left over from this industrial area and the crack here, and I think something that uh, it's. Uh, is the only building, tall building in the in the in the in the in the neighborhood. That's how made me uh, to kind of prefer this location than the the other one. Of course, we had that as a plan B as well because we thought that it might uh, in the, in following days or months that we were we might kind of approach any any challenging or like refuse refused by, by the community, but uh, uh, for me it was more like, let's say, a visual decision, like I, I really like the, 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 the area, and since it was the only building that you cannot really miss. And uh, it was practically, I believe, and uh, n um, not because that this is a better building than the other building, but I think the, it, it was, it, it, in my opinion, it's less chaotic. And uh, even though we have a lot of uh, buildings that kind of um, left over from the X system, and uh, and plus, uh, I like this grayish, gray, grayish uh, uh, color that it's kind of remind me something from the past. 
And since I know that I'm going to use more or less similar uh, material, I thought it fits better than the, this other orange building that we, we had in plan. I don't know if I managed to. Good, excellent. Any more questions? No questions, that's good. We can continue uh, chat uh, in more uh, or less yeah. formal way. Um, I would like to thank all of you for joining us for this discussion. I thank to my guest for being my guest, for coming here and sharing your thoughts and ideas. Um, I also thank uh, to our cooking team tonight, which came directly from Portugalia. Ana Luisa and her friends, and DJ Ramir Omar Ramirez, who will play a gig for us a little bit. And uh, that's it, guys.